Oh, it's incredible, yeah. They've just totally hit upon a sound that's really fresh and unique. I don't know where it came from, really. They're kind of a band that are, that are fueled by you know, caffeine, cheap champagne, groovy shops and AFL football scores. We know that we can be really good, so... and look really good. <laughs> Sometimes it just feels right just to, the only way you can stop is just by bashing everything into the ground and anybody who's ever, you know, destroyed their equipment would agree it's incredibly good fun, you know. Yeah, just that kind of power trio stuff from the 60s is really good. And The Who, of course, is a big influence. And the way our band's set up is kind of like The Who in a way. I only saw them at the, the knitting factory in New York in front of six people, so... <laughs> that was one of the first gigs I did, and I think at that time it was, um, the, you know, the, the very beginning, but... You could sort of see what they had in front of them. I mean, I thought that at that time they probably had a bit of a profile, because you can buy their records over there. And I thought they had a profile, but when you see a band play six people, you think, yeah, they've really got it all in front of them. American crowds seem to want to head out and go and have a good time. Like so many times playing in Texas, we were opening up and we'd, and like half an hour before we'd go on, you'd hear them all coming in and running down the front and you'd hear them all yee hawing and carrying on and just making this huge racket. And you imagine if they were allowed whips in there, they'd be like <laughs> cracking whips and yee hawing and carrying on. So, you know, you come out and you play to them and they just, they, you know, they want rock and you give rock to them and they love it. So. Umai's latest album, Hi-Fi Way, is not yet six months old, but already it's been described as a definitive Australian record. to writing songs, they just sort of happen. And um, usually, you know, I'll, I'll hear a riff that Tim's got or, or a melody line and I'll immediately have an idea of, of how he wants the drums to sound, you know. And lately, because we've been on the road so much, it's just been sound checks. We'll, we'll have these songs and we'll just start developing them you know, in every sound check and, until we're able to play them live. I think we're about ready to make a really kind of just really beat record that's got a lot of swing to it. That sounds really dumb, but, you know, I think we've been touring that much that, you know, dumb rock is starting to make a lot of sense. You know, Mop the Hoopla making sense, you know. I didn't think it had ever come to that point. Yeah. 